What is up you guys? It's your boy Avery here and welcome to a video that I've been wanting to make for a couple of days now but I wanted to have enough playtesting of the new format under my belt first. And this is the best and worst of the brand new February 2022 Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list. So guys, be sure that you hit that like button and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that we can work our way up to 1,000 subscribers so let's go ahead and go over the best first and then we'll get into the worst things about this balance as you can see uh <laughs> up here in the name and description yeah we've got uh we got some stuff to talk about so starting off with the best things about this ban list skill drain went from one to three Rageki from one to three imperial order ban protos ban and eva banned um i never thought that i would see a day where skill drain was back at three and i never thought i would see a day where Rageki was at three i went to my first locals uh my first card shop ots Yu-Gi-Oh tournament back in 2008 when teledad otherwise known as teleport dark arm was the best deck in the format and rageki was banned it had been banned for a few years at that point and if you told me that in 2022 rageki would be at three I would have laughed in your face. This is a card that is not once per turn. It's just destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Konami used to see this card as so powerful that they actually printed a uh, trap card to negate it called Anti Raigeki, which would negate bleh, if I could talk today, which would negate the Raigeki, but then it would destroy all the opponent's monsters instead. So it goes to show you how far we've come in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh that Raigeki is now at three. Now whether you think that's a good or a bad thing, that's up to you. Um, the same goes for Skill Drain. Um, I've heard people like M. Cole 40 and others say you're gonna have that one guy in the room that's playing three Mystic Mind and three Skill Drain. You don't need Skill Drain and Mystic Mind. The most that you're gonna do in a matchup with Mystic Mind is that if you're a branded player and you've got Masquerade Dragon, the one that's like a chain energy that does 600 every time that they activate a Carter effect, Skill Drain will stop that, whereas Mystic Mind won't stop that, so you wouldn't have to worry about continuous effects, but at the same time, Skill Drain would just be bricky in Mystic Mind. You want to get Mystic Mind with your Cauldron or your final countdown established and win the game from there. Proceed to pull out your diddly and play with yourself, as we say here on the channel. Um, so I think three Skill Drain is, is really great i think it's just something that is going to be fun to see um you know and, and see what people do with three skill drain and, and three rageki you can't afford lightning storms you can play rageki you've got three dark hole you've got all of these things um another great section is protos being banned uh and imperial order i don't really feel like eva is a great thing but to each their own especially if you hated drytrons protos to me has always seemed to me to be like a power crept version of tribe infecting virus you know it basically has the effect of tribe infecting virus but it's still better in that regard it's got a 3000 defense ass and it, it just it needed to go Th this card was just bonkers it needed to go and i'm glad to see that it's gone and i think overall it's just going to make for a healthier healthier game overall and and make the sword soul matchup not as oppressive uh imperial order being banned you know this is another great thing because of the fact that imperial order shut down all spells and i mean if you didn't have a way to stop it at its activation like with an mst a cosmic a red reboot what have you you know even with the errata it was still really good paying 700 life points during both standby phases it, it's not that bad and i think that overall this also goes to show that just because a card has an errata and or if you give a card an errata doesn't always necessarily mean it can come back you know you look at a card like metamorphosis you know a lot of people say well give it an errata where you got to pay 5,000 life points or give it an errata where you pay half your life points still though that may not necessarily be enough especially for these old cards that just shut down an entire side of the game in this case spell cards even some people now were saying okay imperial order is gone now let's get rid of anti-spell the difference with anti-spell though is that you can at least set the spells and activate them on your next turn that's not as oppressive sure you can make the argument that your opponent can just otk you and you'll lose but that's not something that is as oppressive as Imperial Order. Also, Imperial Order could be activated as a negation card, whereas Anti-Spell really can't. You've got to activate it at the beginning of their turn and hope that it sticks. Whereas the opponent plays something like Engage, you can't chain Anti-Spell to stop the Engage, but you can chain Imperial Order to stop the Engage. They lose the resource, and then they're also locked out of spells. Uh, now let's move into the bad section, um, because I feel like that that's really 
what encompasses the rest of this ban list. Um, Eva, you can argue, is like an in, in-between, in because I've heard people saying Eva being banned is great. I've heard other people saying Drytrons really weren't doing anything. I'm in the camp of Drytrons were a good meta deck if you didn't want to shell out a lot of money um, for a, any other kind of meta deck. You wanted something that was ritual-based. Um, you know, Eva being banned was just like, really? Are we really going to do this? And sure enough, Konami's like, yeah, bitch, we doing it. <laughs> so Eva being banned, I see it as a bad thing. It can also be seen as a good thing, depending on what camp that you're in. Um, I just feel bad for the Drytron players, because I do like ritual decks. I didn't like Drytron, but at the same time, being a Flund Reese player, uh, and even really any sort of meta deck player, if you're able to establish your board and shut down Drytrons from the get-go, they're going to lose the game. Even against Flunderies, if you're going first and you're playing Flunderies, the Drytron player is most likely going to lose if they don't have a board wipe, especially if it's only game one. They're most likely not going to have that. You set up your statue, or you set up the Dreaming Town. The opponent activates the effect of a Drytron. You chain Dreaming Town, bring out the Wind statue, and they just lose the game. They have to scoop. You know, Drytron's a very easy matchup for Flunderies. Um, so I, I feel like we're definitely going to see Drytron go to the wayside um, with Eva now being banned. Another bad thing is Pot of Desire is at one. You know, you're banishing a quarter of your deck to draw two cards. That's not really something I feel needs to go to one. Even something like Pot of Duality never went to one. The lowest it ever went to was to two. And that was just because the fact that the game was slower back then, much slower back then, looking back on it now, um, that Konami wanted to hurt consistency of, of decks in general. And maybe that's when th what they wanted to do with Desires, or maybe they just wanted to push sales of their new products so that people would be forced to play Extraves or Prosperity, or even Duality, really. Um, Desires was just a overall good card, depending on your deck. You were kind of forced to play multiple copies of cards so that you potentially wouldn't lose all of them to a single copy of Desires. Um, it, it just it felt like something that didn't really need to be done. But Konami is known for limiting draw cards. Um, you know, you look at cards like Into the Void, Upstart Goblin, One Day of Peace, that lets you draw, or in the case of One Day of Peace, stall out turns. Konami has just always kind of limited that stuff. So it goes to show that even if you're going to banish 10 cards and just to draw two, Konami's still going to limit it. Uh, of course, the obvious, Predaplant Vertanaconda. What gets me with this is that Konami didn't even at least put it at two or put it at one. They left this big old Venus flytrap at three. Now, you're probably saying, well, Avery, 99% of you get decks only play one copy. True. However, there was a deck profile that I saw, I want to say from maybe a year ago, from Team Samurai, and it was of his Dark Magician deck. And he was actually playing two copies of Anaconda. Now, granted, this was a year ago, but still the argument can apply to today. The fact that Anaconda's at three, the fact that you have the choice to play three, is bananas. Because, especially in a deck like Dark Magician that plays a, several different fusion spells, has the ability to play several different fusion spells at that, you know, they can make an Anaconda, dump, you know, a a fusion, polymerization card, whatever, magicalized fusion, make a monster. Next turn, they make another anaconda. They, you know, use another effect or change a card to dark on that turn. You know, at least put it to one so that if you negate the one anaconda or you destroy, you banish that one anaconda, they're locked out of anaconda. But no, they left it at three. And that's really what is insane is that they could have at least put the card at one to force players to say look we know anaconda is a problem but we don't want to ban it yet we're at least going to put the bitch at, at, at one but no you left it at three players have the ability to play three which is still what's insane needs to be banned but the fact that they didn't at least put it to two or one and just left it at three is still insane to me finally let's tackle this so the next update after this will be, quote, in a few months. Konami, look, I get that you don't want players blowing up your phone, blowing up your email, asking for where the ban list is, blowing up your Twitter, asking for the ban list. But look, like, at least give us something. And I was actually going to make a video about this, but I was still working on the script for it, where I was talking about... Instead of Konami just saying the next update after this will be no sooner or no, or no later than, say, February 1st, what if they gave us an in-between? So the next update after this will be no sooner than February 1st, but no later than March 1st. Now, granted, people could make the argument of, well, they could just say the next update after this is no sooner than February 1st, but then no later than October 1st, and then you're potentially waiting to October 1st. 
They want to keep people constantly engaged with the game, whether it be through Master Duel or in the TCG with their OTS stores, what have you. And I think now with Master Duel out, which is something that we need to be careful of, especially with the multiple changes on this ban list to reflect the OCG, especially in Master Duel, since that's the OCG ban list, is are they going to get lackadaisical with the ban list and just say a few months and, you know, even to see how people like master duel you know who's to say that on the next ban list we won't see max c at three because people in master duel love max c love the ocg ban list and you know they're going to start making the ban list look closer to what the ocg has now that's debatable whether you think that that's a good or a bad thing but keep this in mind overall as a ban list perspective and why konami needs to be more open with their times you know, even if you can't place a, a specific end date on the ban list anymore, at least give us a broad, generic, you know, date amount to look at. You know, the next update after this, February 1st, between March 1st, you know, whatever. So that players have something to look forward to. In the meantime, they can play casual decks, they can pick things up, you know, they can play on Master Duel, what have you. But keep this in mind. Years and years ago, when the TCG and OCG balance were linked together, they were tied at the hip. Cards would not get hit in the TCG that people were saying need to be hit because the deck wasn't as good in the OCG. So, let's take, for example, a card like X-Saber Dark Soul. Back when X-Sabers first came out, Dark Soul was very busted, and you could also stack the search multiple times. If you got Dark Soul in the graveyard 10 times, you were getting 10 searches. It was like a spellbook of judgment back in like 2010, 2011. And Konami did not hit. X Saber Dark Soul or anything in X Sabers because the deck wasn't doing anything in the OCG at the time because at the time they didn't have Dark Soul. And I'm hoping that Konami is not going to go down the same path that they did years ago where the OCG and the TCG balance were tied at the hip and that changed in 2013 with Dragon Ruler format when they hit a bunch of different cards compared to the OCG. So Konami, please keep the ban list separate. Don't just try to appeal to people playing Master Duel. Max C is does not need to be in the game. It does not. Keep that shit in Master Duel. And maybe that's what they'll do. Maybe they'll keep a happy medium. Hey, we've got all these players bitching that they want to use Max C. Go play Master Duel. You can use Max C. Hey, we got people saying that they really want three skill drain. We can do that. Let's put three skill drain in the TCG. It's the same as the OCG. It won't be that bad. So Konami, please just keep that in mind when you're putting your freaking ban list together and give us a damn end date or something that we can work with instead of just a few months. A few months, my ass. The next time I upload will be in a few months. Baby back bullshit. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.